Wonder what the odds are of this holding there. It's got a tube in it though, so it might. too much in case that thing pops all right good enough it's pretty rough looking closing my eyes for safety in case that thing decides it wants to do something wild That's all there. I want to put it in. Hey, it actually rolls now. I could probably get that off there by hand, but just to be safe. Check this out. I just picked up this 30 foot, what it is, it's a hay elevator conveyor system. So, and the use for it is when you got real tall barn lofts, you can crank it up real high and then just set the hay on here rather than trying to throw it up. And let me tell you, these are hard to find in this particular configuration. So what I'm going to do with it is I want it for a firewood conveyor. I want to be able to park my dump truck. I'm sorry about the sun there, guys. Under the end of this thing. Have the splitter that I just finished. Push the wood into it and then this take it up. I think I got a good deal on this one. I paid 200 bucks for it. So that's the cheapest one I ever found. And it was the closest one I ever found. And it was still three hours away. So they're not real popular around here. So it's going to need some work, of course, at that price, which is fine. Looks like it needs a little sheet metal work in here. Got a hole in here. So they got these little pieces of wood here. I guess that's what this chain rides on. And that, uh, I guess, keeps it from wearing into the metal. So all that's got to be replaced because there's, well, you can see what's left of that wood. So that ain't no big deal. Got plenty of wood. Missing a couple paddles here and there. I'm sorry about the sun, it's in the wrong spot. But it's missing a couple of these paddles, which I think that looks pretty simple. I should be able to make some of them. This pulley down here, the drive pulley, it's all been up, so I need one of those. It's got this PTO shaft, so you just hook your tractor to it, and that's what powers it. However, I think I want to make that, uh, put an air-cooled gas engine here, just like a little three, four horsepower to turn that. And a lot of these little angle pieces need bolted back on. But it survived the ride home. It's got this pin set up here. So you can hook it to your tractor or whatever to move it. I'm probably going to do away with that and just put like a regular ball hitch on there. Like coupler. So I can just move it with anything. Hey, well that should be enough yakking. So I guess let's uh, start working on this thing. First thing I want to try is to get this smashed pulley off so it's got a nut or a bolt locking this hub onto the shaft and then the pulley unbolts with four bolts i don't think it's going to come off but we're going to try anyways well, good thing i wasn't betting because the nut came off
Oh no, that's not good. This end's turning, but the uh, end of the bolt isn't. We're going to snap it off. Just like that. Just need a bigger hammer. is doing something. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pulling it off. Mm. Just go get a battery. That's easier with the impact. Got it. I think it's about time to upgrade my cordless impact. Back on this today. So I jumped ahead a little bit and I made this little bracket here just to hold this up off the ground. And I uh, got a new pulley. So that's good. Now I got a trailer tongue and I'm just gonna just weld that right onto that guy. And yeah, I ain't even gonna mess with trying to cut all that out. I just weld it to that, and then if I ever don't want that on there for some reason, and just cut it off. But having a trailer ball on it makes it super easy to move rather than this tractor pin setup. <laughs>
Oh, that'll work. That'll serve its purpose. I love how people on YouTube always try and tell me how to weld, but the reality of it is, is that's what I do for a living. So you kind of just look dumb. All right, now the plan is, is I want to loosen these chains so I can take them off and get all this rotten wood out from in here and get ready to replace all that. So I guess we'll start with seeing if this tensioner will come loose. We'll just soak everything down some penetrating oil and give us the best chance possible. Let's see if this does anything. I'm just spinning on top of the Okay, so once upon a time, I had a nut on each side. But the one on this side as well is pretty much gone. Crazy how much them rust. You know, these bolts look really rough, but actually they all seem to be coming out. Which is always a good thing, I guess. get all this rotten wood out of here.
metal up and then where this hole got punched see if we can bend you see metal sticking down here see if we can bend that back up got my bodywork tools you know a claw hammer four pound hammer crescent wrench and a pair of pliers so yeah we should be pretty good
big piece of metal under here. So let's see if that'll flatten around. Right? some tough stuff. All right, now's a good stopping point because I can't tell if it's getting better or worse. So I know it's better now. 
So I'll just stop right here. I ripped down some boards, so we got some nice one inch by two inch strips put on here. So I'm gonna get started doing that. I'm just gonna start at the top, work my way down, so. those finished up so turned out pretty nice it was hard because up through there it's nice and straight so i could clamp the wood right against the side but down here this bows out so it just kind of had to eyeball it but anyways so i'm going to coat these with some used motor oil to make them last longer if you's doing hay or something you probably wouldn't want to do that but for firewood it's not gonna matter so i'm gonna do coat them real quick and then we'll put this chain back on and see if we can make something for an engine to work over here. I was just going to do the boards, but since I spilled some, I just decided to do the whole center section too. Just kind of help keep it from rusting as much. It's not like you can paint it in here, just wear off. So, and again, don't do that if it's for hay or any type of food or, you know, common sense should tell you that. This is just for firewood, so that won't hurt a thing. Now, let's get these chain links put back on. And I got a motor to mock up and see if we can make work.
I was rotating this over by hand to make sure there was no binding issues. And this right here was coming in contact with that. Lift that. Oh, yeah, got plenty of turns. So, I just kind of got a major problem. I didn't know I had until now, but I was checking this motor, I was getting ready to make a mount for it, but then I realized. If it's on this side, it's going to spin the conveyor the wrong way. So, I thought about turning it, because it's got to be turned this way if it's on this side, which is not very ideal, because then the pull cord will be under here. And like tucking it under and running the belt. But then that's just going to be difficult. Then, so what needs to happen is this shaft just needs pulled out, spun around, and put back in. The problem with that is, is he's got straight screwdriver head tips on here, and they're stripped out. And they're probably original, rusted on here. So you know those two aren't coming out. Not to mention them bearings. I'm sure I could probably hammer and get it out. But the, I don't think those sprockets are coming out. So, the only thing I've come up with is to cut an access hole around through here, pick the thing up, spin it around, put it back in there, weld it back up. That's the only, that's the easiest way I can see doing that without, like, because I'll completely destroy them trying to get them to pry off of there. I would ask you you guys for advice but don't have it solved by the time you see the video so
there we go got the access hole welded back up so it's actually worked out a lot better than i thought now that we got this on this side and set my pulley back up here and now the engine can go like this and it'll be right so i'm gonna make something that comes off of this right this brace right here comes out i got a piece of c channel i'm gonna bring out so i'll do some measuring and see what we get figured out too big for the chop saw but I can make it work <laughs> looky there that's a nice cut and this other end's all torched off the bucket and I want to make this so the engine mount is sitting level in this position because, yeah, that's not a bad angle for it to sit at, but if I crank that up, then the engine's going to be at a real hard angle. So if it's, at least if it's level here and I raise it up, it'll just be at a slight angle. So I'll try and figure out where. And right there's level. That's not far off. I might bring it just a smidge the other way.
All right, he's the string, got this thing lined up. Just about, well, got this thing lined up perfect. I mean, that's straight as I can get it with my eye. So I'm using spray paint to mark the bolt holes on this. We should be ready to drill. All right, before I put that belt on, I need to put a pull cord on there and make sure this engine runs. So, I guess we'll do that. That comes up this way. I'm gonna take it one, or should I do two rounds farther than it was? I'll go the next one. Alright. There's a clamp. Where it goes. Rope. Release it, wind itself up. Then, whenever you put this handle on, make sure you got a little bit of tension on it. If not, it'll just hang loose
All right, just like that. Got a new pull cord. before I go any farther. Yep, it runs. Alright, actually got the right size belt now. As you can see, this has plenty of slack in it. And then I'm going to use that tensioner there and make it to where it's spring loaded, but I can pull it down and lock it to start the engine, then engage it. So, I done got it marked out right here where I want. I'm just going to weld that straight to this. So, let's get that cleaned up and get to it.
tapering like that. All right, I like that design. And all that is, is to hold that so I can start it. And then once it's running, I should probably come up with a safer way to release that. But then once it's running, I can probably just grab that. Pull that back. Get it going. Should be the first time we get to see this thing moving, probably. 15 years or so. So, let's give it a go. need a safer way to do that. Alright, I fixed the chain, so I took all these flaps off of here because what had happened was these were just wire tied on there and it came loose on a couple of them and one of them fell off somehow coming around and got jammed in there and that's what caused that side to break. So, so I took them all off. I kind of got a different idea for flaps anyways. Alright, so this right here should solve most of our problems. What it is, is this is a four and a half inch pulley up here. And it's a 14 in the back and the RPMs are way too fast on that chain. So this should significantly lower that. So let's go do some math and see how low it's gonna spin. All right, so first let's figure out how fast it's spinning in its factory configuration. So basically we got a big pulley and a small pulley, then a belt. From the factory, the big pulley was 12 and 3 quarters inch. So we'll do 12.75 to make that easy to do math. And then the drive pulley was 5 inches. So that's the drive. And But this turned off a tractor PTO, which would be 540 RPMs. So... In order to figure out how fast this shaft is spinning, it's really easy. All you do is you just take your drive pulley, the diameter of it, times RPMs, and then divide it by this. But for a visual of it, like solving a math problem, let's put 12.75 over 5 equals 540, which is the RPM. Then X. And you want to solve for X. All you do is cross multiply and then divide. And we get out our trusty calculator. And we just do 5 times 540. And then you divide that. 12.75. And that gives you 211.8 RPMs. So, X equals 211. So, basically what I'm getting at is from the factory, that chain is spinning 
211 RPMs, you know, give or take, depending on load, engine speed, and all that stuff. But around this number right here is where I need to be with that engine. I should have done this math before I even hooked it up to realize it wasn't going to work, but I just used what I had. So, you know, the big pulley and the little pulley in our belt. And the big pulley now, I moved it up to 14 inches. And then the little pulley now is four and a half. Ah, that's a four. And then again, this side is the drive, which that's important because if you get them backwards, it'll be way off. But now I'm guessing the maximum RPM on that engine is 3,600 RPMs. So I don't want the thing running wide open on the conveyor. So I'm gonna use 2,000 RPMs as my baseline because that should be a good medium throttle should be a good speed for it to run at that's what i'm basing all this off of so then we just do that the same way we did this just put 14 over 4.5 equals 2000 x so and we do 4.5 times 2,000 divided by 14, 642.9 RPMs. So that, that is what our problem is. That's spinning, let's see. That's spinning over three times faster than it did from the factory. So I knew it was too fast. I didn't realize it was that much though. So now we're going to change this to do another visual here. We still got 14 in the back, but we're changing this front pulley to a two inch. So now, so now let's break out the calculator. So that'd be four thousand divided by fourteen. So now, by changing this front pulley, that's going to bring us down to. 285.7 which is a lot closer than 642 so 285 that's still a little faster than that but that's it the 2000 rpms i might be able to get that lower or if that's still too fast i can increase this back pulley and that would bring that down too so basically a smaller pulley on the front, bigger pulley on the back, the slower, whatever your turn's gonna turn. You reverse it and it does the opposite. Pretty simple, I just thought I'd give you all a visual on how to do that. I had to Google it because I forgot. So anyways, that's how you do that. It's really easy. Let's get this motor back off, get this thing changed. All right, quite some time has passed and I took the time, I put all these original flaps I had back on and then I went ahead and welded these angle flaps I wanted, which that should be perfect for catching firewood. So I welded them on. I want to put one every three foot, but I ran out of scrap ones, so I'll get some more. But for right now, there's a bunch of them three foot and then a bunch of them spaced out six feet. So anyways, I got this thing tensioned right, I believe. Spins over nice. So now we're going to fire it up and see with that gear reduction if this thing will actually work like it's supposed to.
Well, now that this is going, I want to take it over and get it set up in front of the splitter where I want to do all my wood at. And maybe we'll cut a load of wood today. All right, so I'm kind of worried about wood falling and wedging down in here and that thing spinning around and breaking the chain. So I got an old mud flap here. I'm just gonna use that to hopefully prevent that from happening. Although I should probably put that on the bottom. Anyways, so that's a plan, put that there and then that'll keep wood from going back down under there. I'm just gonna put it on this for now.
That's kind of what I'm thinking. Something like that. Just a sawmill slab. That would be more ideal. All right, well, that's the plan. Got a jag wood cut here, so let's get this thing started and demonstrate it working.
conveyor works good but the wood splitter this table i made is not where it's it needs to be wider and lower down so then as it splits here and they wedge up and down it'll have room so it won't be fighting itself so i gotta redo that table but other than that conveyor works good so a little bit of fine tuning and i think this is going to be a really good setup so this video is plenty long enough the conveyor hasn't had any issues check out the truck really like it throws it right up on there piles it real high and i can pull forward and load the back it's nice but i guess i'm going to go ahead and end this one here so that is bringing the old conveyor back to life and getting to use the wood splitter it it works great it's just the uh table but the whole concept here is good so nothing you know a little trial and error can't fix so anyways you guys have a good day and we'll see you in the next one